Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be looking at V0 by Vercel. It's a AI based app builder. Basically, you give it a prompt and it generates an app. So last week I looked at Lovable. I think it's quite similar to that. We're going to see actually like what it entails, what the pricing, and then I'll give you an idea if I think it's something you should be using. And yeah, we're going to see who is this tool actually for, is it for technical, non-technical people or people in the middle. So yeah, let's dive into it and see what it's all about. I have a request from a client to build a marketplace for properties like real estate properties that we're going to have listed. So like I already have a backend for this, but I don't know if I'll connect the backend today. Really want to see what it comes up with by default, if it's going to include a backend or we need to prompt it, but let's work on our prompt first. I want to build a property search interface for a real estate marketplace. It should include a split screen layout, filter on the left, price range, bedrooms, keywords, a map view, scrollable list, right, with the properties. And then when a user clicks on the pin, the map property should highlight in the list. A card should open in the map, and then it needs to be responsive. So I'm just starting with this today. I'm not going to do the login everything because we already have a, an application for this. So realistically, I would do this in cursor to build out this new functionality, but I want to see what this tool offers and how it's different from something like cursor. Let's give that a go. I'm probably gonna have to sign in. All right. I will sign in. Okay. We're signed in now. And now, yeah, it's generating the application straight away. I can see the code. It's probably going to be a Next.js app since this is Vercel and Vercel are the people who make Next.js. So I feel like that is what it is, but I'm not sure yet if that's the case. I mean, it's using React. We can tell that. It looks very similar to Lovable, but it shows you the code right away. So this is looking like it's for someone pretty technical because I don't see how a non-technical person could understand like the code here. You can't read code. Okay, so it's done and straight off the bat, it's giving me a runtime error. So the first prompt results in an application that doesn't even work. It's asking me to fix this. The use sidebar must be used within a sidebar. I can fix it. But yeah, honestly, similar already to most AI code solutions. Even cursor does this where you give it something and it delivers a solution with compiler errors that doesn't work. And then you have to give it the errors and then iterate until you get it working. Okay. So now it's working. And here's our first version. The map is quite bad. It doesn't load fully for some reason. It's not using Google Maps. Open Street Map, I guess that's like an alternative. Yeah, this doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, it's very buggy. I'm putting in a price here and then it loses focus right away once I put in a character. And then I have my code here. So I don't see like a package.json, which is weird but I can download the code now. This is a Next.js app with Tailwind. It's strange though that, yeah, this is not showing me the actual other files. When I click on properties, it scrolls into focus these. Okay. So I'll just mention there's some issues with it. The search address and I enter a character, it loses focus right away. The price range also doesn't work can't adjust the level yeah i told it about these issues and it hopefully will go out and fix it right now okay so fix that and now does the address work no same issue it's weird whenever i still have the issue where when i enter one character into the address it loses focus okay tried it again <laughs> same issue so that's annoying the ai does not seem to be able to fix that kind of trivial bug i'll give it one more try it still doesn't work properly same issue let's see if third time is the term okay it's better now i'm able to type but i guess they have this debounce effect where it loses focus once i stop typing so it can search our map is still buggy. I don't know if the search is working. Yeah, it seems like it's working. But now these don't work when I click. So yeah, it's really produced a buggy application. 
So it frustrating because now I'm going to have to just work through all these issues with the actual prompt and I'm probably paying like right now I'm on a free trial. What do I get with the free generate content with V zero share and publish chats up to 200 projects, deploy app server cell, no limitations on prompts, premium 10, 20 times more messages than free. How many messages do I even have? Maybe it says on the pricing page, daily and monthly message limits. So they're not telling us how many messages we have. A message is a single input, AKA a prompt. They're not telling me how many messages I have. Okay. Five out of 10. So I have 10 messages used five of my messages. First one to create the actual application that was buggy and didn't work. And then I've used the other four to fix bugs and it's not really working. So I'm not liking this already. The AI itself in this application doesn't seem that good for what it's produced so far. It's very buggy. So I'd have to upgrade my plan here and I will get 10 to 20 more messages. I don't know why they say 10 to 20 more. That's really weird that they put a range. Why not just say 10 or 20? Cause I have 10 now. So if I get 10 times and I get a hundred message prompts at $20. That's not really a good value. In my opinion, the team is 20 to 30 and yeah, I get some other features. Okay. Interesting. And then, yeah, I can see they have integrations like the other tool. You can connect Superbase and it's hosted on Vercel. Vercel, you're able to create integrations at Postgres database for you. Yeah, it will bring me to Vercel and then accept and create. And then it's going to charge me for that. Probably I'm not going to bother with that because it's just going to look like the Superbase studio probably, right? Where you can go in and see the database and it just is hosting the database. And then, yeah, they have the ability to deploy to Vercel, but that's so straightforward. It's an XJS application. So, you know, to deploy an XJS app is simple, but yeah, first impressions are quite bad <laughs> for this, even worse than lovable because of how bad the application it generated is. It's buggy, right? And you're paying messages for it to be buggy. So. Why would you use this? I think I'm done using this tool. There's not much else I can dive into it. Seems like it's very basic, right? A nerfed version of cursor is what I'm seeing, right? And they're going to be charging more. Like you have to pay per messages by default. So I'm like, again, like I'm coming to that question of why would someone want to use this? If you're non-technical, I don't see how you're going to use this either because the first thing it is producing in front of you is code, right? You need to understand that code. Otherwise it's going to be gibberish. I, I don't see this being used by why use this. If you could use cursor or Windsor, like an IDE, you have a better editor experience. The AI model is better, not perfect, but you have a lot more choice. You can select Claude, ChatGPT or Gemini in this, you have no control. It's abstracted by default. And just seems very limited. Yeah. My recommendation is don't waste your time with this tool. Yeah. In 10 minutes, I'm not seeing any clear value compared to cursor. I think this is the problem in the AI space right now is that there's so many tools that are coming onto the market and a lot of them are just worse versions of things that exist like lovable and now V zero. I don't see any reason why anyone should use these like use cursor or Windsor. These are the best options for AI coding I know about right now. I know there's other options like Claude code, which is less of an ID and more of a command prompt or something. These web based kind of AI app builders seem like a waste of time and a waste of money. These IDEs like cursor are a layer on the AI models to improve coding, right? You could code with ChatGPT, right? You can ask ChatGPT to generate code. You can give it your code and ask it to refactor it or add new features. This is what I used to do before I started using cursor. I was using ChatGPT, but then started using cursor and it was much more efficient. It has the full context of my solution. I can reference files. 
is so much better. Web app builders seem like another wrapper because you don't have to use the IDE and they run the application for you already. So you don't have to do like NPM run devs uh, to run your application and go to localhost. They're just running the application within their application, which may seem impressive for non-technical people. The novelty is probably what sells it. I created this quickly, but actually iterating on it and working on it, it doesn't make sense. It's not an improvement on your development workflow. Cursor is clearly an improvement. I could be wrong on this tool. Maybe people are building successful products from it. Again, this is just my opinion on what I'm seeing from the AI space. So yeah, take it with a grain of salt, of course. And if you are using it, let me know in the comments. I'm curious, right? I'm trying to make sense of this new world with these tools. So I'm looking from my perspective and trying to go through them quick because I don't want to spend hours trying new tools. I want to spend time building, but I do want to look at new tools and see, is this worth using? And that's why I'm creating these videos. You could get my opinion or I can get the opinion of others. So thanks for watching. If you like this content, I'd appreciate if you subscribe.